It's one of the world's toughest endurance challenges. The longest ocean race around the planet. Yet its crew are drawn from all walks of life, spanning three generations. Many are novices before completing extensive pre-race training, but even this cannot prepare them for the extremes Mother Nature has in store. From hurricane force winds to squalls that can knock a boat flat. Just didn't see the wave coming. And freezing temperatures to the blistering heat of the doldrums. Think of Dante's Inferno and double it. The toughest, wildest conditions imaginable. All within the confines of a 70-foot boat in the middle of an ocean, often soaked to the skin and suffering sleep deprivation. I did wonder whether that might be it and whether, whether I was going to come back. The stage is set for a roller coaster of emotions and experiences. 40,000 miles, 16 races, 12 identical boats, six continents, one unique challenge. This is the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. This extraordinary around the world yacht race draws together people from all over the planet for the adventure of a lifetime. It's something they have worked hard for and maybe booked years in advance, having planned the time needed away from normal life. For some, it's an enormous step into unknown territory, both physically and mentally. The biggest proportion of crew um, are not serious sailors. 40% have never sailed at all. The majority sailed when they were children um, and then had a family and, 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 and got a job and have never sailed since. You know, they spent maybe 30 years and never set foot on a boat. They, they see the yacht, they remember they love sailing um, and it re-sparks that enthusiasm in them. You, you, can't, you can't beat this, I think, for a challenge that's open to the general public. Rough sea, for me, is the greatest exhilaration. We're in 2013 and we can't harness the sea, you know. It's the biggest challenge in sailing. Um, how could you not be excited about such as like that? The idea for a global race open to anyone was inspired by Clipper Race founder Sir Robin Knox Johnston, who famously was the first man to sail solo non-stop round the world back in 1969 in his yacht Suheili. This really must be a tremendous moment for a man who is obviously loving every second of today's sail. You never know if you can do it. Um, I wasn't the only person thinking of doing it. So if I'd left it any longer, someone else would have done it. Uh, I just feel that I've got the experience. I've got a boat I know. Uh, I've got a chance. And I don't think I could face myself in future if I didn't take that chance, take that opportunity. Uh, finished in Falmouth 312 days after setting out. Probably the longest time anyone's taken to get round the world. But the objective was to get round. And the cannon has gone. The cannon has gone. The hooters, the horns, the salute. Day 312, about 25 past three on April the 22nd. And Robin Knox Johnson and Sue Haley have sailed non-stop around the world. I mean, you're surrounded by boats as you come in. Uh, some of them being well controlled, some not, some being irresponsible. But eventually I crossed the finish line because the engine hadn't worked for months. So they towed me in to uh, put me on a buoy. Oh yeah, big crowd. Yeah, lots and lots of people. That was a bit of a dream really because, um, you know, that isn't for me. That's nothing to do with me. This doesn't happen to me. I'm, I'm a simple sailor. So Robin is a traditional sailor who has inspired many others to embrace his sense of adventure. For this race, a brand new fleet includes a Great Britain entry, ceremoniously named in Trafalgar Square, London, under the watchful eye of another maritime legend, Lord Nelson. One, two, three, I name this boat, <laughs> Great Britain. 
This is an opportunity to launch a really exciting sailing venture. This is the first boat we've had of this sort. Uh, Trafalgar Square is a place that's resonant with sailing history, so there's a fantastic opportunity to bring this wonderful new boat into the heart of London, to name it here today, Great Britain, and wish it well as it sets off around the world. While the race may be for amateur sailors, the dangers and the demands they face are very real indeed. Taking on the world's toughest oceans is not for everyone. Bonding into a team, living days on end together with crewmates and racing hard is a major test for all. So what drives ordinary people to take up this extraordinary challenge? I just wanted to do something exciting in life that's challenging and that's out of my comfort zone. And I think this will deliver all those things. It will test me to the limit. It, I actually got into it because my nephew um, has signed up for the next race. And when he got the stuff for it, I looked at this, yeah, I can do that, but I'm going to jump in first. <laughs> I was going to work one day on the Tube in London. And as I think a lot of people are, a little bit jaded, a little bit um, tired. And I saw his smiling face uh, and I saw the... Uh, the split in the middle. I saw one half that looked a bit like me and the other half looked like someone I wanted to be. Uh, having a great time, living in a, an adventure. So yeah, I, I sign up straight away. There's this whole other ocean of knowledge essentially in, in offshore sailing and big boat sailing and uh, working with the wind and the, and the weather. Um, it's, been, it's just been really enlightening that there's so much more out there that I can experience. The raw demographic is usually different, but if you're looking for a common spark in the crew, there's something there in everybody. They want to live their life a little bit differently. Everybody says you're completely mad and at your age you shouldn't be doing this sort of thing. But if you want to do it, you've bloody well got to do it, haven't you? I shouldn't be swearing, should I? <laughs> Former professional rugby player and now successful builder Craig Forsyth is from the north of England. He had no previous interest in sailing until a friend mentioned the experience they'd had on the previous clipper race and he was hooked. And I've just worked flat out for the last six months to get as much done as I could. Um, parents retired and wanted a house renovating as well, so I had to get as much of that done. So I've had to um, cut some things off on my own house and it's not getting done now before I go away, but I'll just do it when I come back. I'm off sailing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Christmas present. It's just after... Um, so it's January the 19th. I think that's a day I'm always going to remember. And you just you walk around St. Catherine's Dock. You've just seen this beautiful red boat looking all brand new and smart and shiny. Uh, and you just think, yeah, I'd like to play on that. Two weeks later, I've applied for around the world. It's been accepted. And then I'm working my nuts off to, uh, to get this money to pay for this race. I look forward to the rough seas. They, to me, uh, just I, I find I'm going to find them so exciting, um, challenging, and getting over that challenge and surviving, um, and pushing harder and harder again. You know you're going to be tired. You know you're going to be hungry. You know you, you, you know your crew is going to be on at you, um, and because you know that, you can prepare for it. Be the guy that knows it's going to happen and then you can help your teammates out, you can help your crew out, you can help them get through it, because they might not have been in that situation before, and you have. I hope it doesn't take me beyond my limit, because I want to achieve. Um, I want to come home on the boat that's first. You can never come back to this race, 13-14 race, will never be replayed, so there's only ever going to be one winner. Um, I want to be that winner.